Guten Tag, mein Name ist Oggi und ich lerne Deutsch. Why am I speaking in German to you? Well, all will become clear later in this video, which is about how to help prevent dementia and other brain-related or neurological-related uh, diseases as we age. If you don't know, I'm now 62 years old. Uh, many years ago, when you got into your 60s, that was it, basically. There were so many diseases out there, um, but we can do a lot about it. You know, modern science helps, but also we can do a lot to ourselves. And I'm going to explain a couple of things that we can do to help our brains stay active. The prospect of a wrinkly and senile future has led neuroscientists across the globe to turn their attention towards modifiable risk factors. That basically means lifestyle choices that we have control over that influence how gracefully the human brain ages. There are many key factors uh, and overall general health, but one key risk factor is a person's fitness level as physical fitness. And it's generating an enormous amount of interest. Good. About time, primarily because its impact on their brain appears to be gigantic. Physical activity increases the flow of blood and oxygen to the brain, which is beneficial in addressing inflammation and oxidative stress that can alter the brain structure and ability to function. Exercise also helps combat a variety of chronic, chronic diseases, many of which impact the brain and can lead to neurodegenerative conditions such as Alzheimer's. A study of 2,235 older men to see how fitness affects the brain found that the risk of developing dementia was reduced by as much as 60% in those who followed a generally healthy lifestyle with exercise being the leading mitigating factor. That's six zero percent. I don't know how many times I'm going to say this uh, exercise, but what's not to like? Perhaps more significantly, and I am reading this from a screen, by the way, uh, a study of older people already experienced the first stage of dementia found that exercise could actually reverse some of their memory deficits. Yet another study found that the hippocampus, the brain region responsible for memory, literally gets bigger after a program of moderate intense intensity exercise. Now, of course, moderate intensity exercise varies from person to person. And also, if you haven't exercised for a long time, then uh, you probably need to see your doctor before doing so. It also depends on the type of exercise that you do. In the study, to determine whether anaerobic exercise improves memory and increases the size of the hippocampus. A group of researchers at the University of Pittsburgh measured the brain region in 120 people before and after six months of either anaerobic or stretching fitness program. Sadly, for those who were hoping that had a bit of a stretch on the, on the couch while watching telly could do the trick, the hippocampus in this these group of people was far less than those in the aerobic group whose hippocampus grew significantly more, which helped these people uh, perform better in memory tasks. Sadly, the evidence is less conclusive for yoga. While some studies comparing the impact of yoga on cognitive functions find no improvements compared to walking, Others have found that yoga-based exercise has significant benefits. Well, we all know that yoga is good uh, anyway, but whether it's good for the brain uh, is open to question. Continuing on this theme, uh, so one of the best ways to get an idea of how important exercise is to your cognitive function is to see the effect of what a lack of physical fitness can do to your brain. One study showed how a sample of patients who had poor physical health and as a consequence were suffering from heart failure also presented with poor cognitive function. Imaging of the patient's brains showed a negative change in the shape and size of the cerebral cortex, including a reduced volume in the grey matter. 
There are lots of uh, neurodegenerative disorders linked with aging, such as Alzheimer's, dementia, and Parkinson's, which are extremely pre prevalent in today's society uh, with a, such an aging population. The science behind how exercise can improve the quality of life of those with age-related brain dysfunction isn't entirely understood. However, studies think that energy expenditure from exercise helps to protect the brain in some way from the wasting away of brain tissue and cells that become that comes with aging. The overall result of the research has seen that by increasing an elderly person's exercise output, they have a reduced need for medication and so suffer less from the negative side effects that can come from some of those drugs. You know, I've said, and others have said many, many times, that exercise is not just about big muscles or, you know, anything like that. So not only do you have um, better, uh, if you get, if you exercise regularly, you're likely to have better bone density, you know, which um, can help prevent osteoporosis, especially in women, older women. Um, but also bigger muscles enables you to do daily activities uh, a lot easier. Uh, you don't feel so tired, you may sleep better, uh, etc. And now, obvious that it's also good for the brain as well. Now, as I said, we are all different. So, you know, and I'm not a scientist. I'm just reading what uh, scientists have come up with. So do your own research. So that's physical exercise. Well, what about other things can, that can help the brain as you get older? As people get older, our brains mature and change. One change is a decrease in a trait called neuroplasticity. I think I've got that right. Neuroplasticity, which is the brain's ability to adapt to new experiences. So for children's developing brains, they have higher levels of plasticity than adult brains, which allows them to reconfigure their brains to a remarkable degree. For older learners, you know, learning new things uh, becomes more difficult. So I spoke to you a little bit in German uh, because I'm learning German at the moment. OK, I'm not too bad at languages, but there are other things you can do. Learning a new skill, whatever, woodworking or, or flower arranging or whatever. But I'm going to concentrate on language. So for older learners, picking up a language's grammar and syntax rules can be tough because you have to retrain your brain to think of sentences in new ways. Oh, and German is not easy to learn. It's one of the things that can help with cognitive function as well. There is actually a name for adult learning, and that is andragogy. I think I've pronounced that right. Andragogy, that's A-N-D-R-A-G-O-G-Y. I said before, do your own research. Um, so basically, as adults, we learn completely different than we do uh, to children. As children, you know, you're at school, it's more or less forced learning. I mean, you've got to do it. Whereas as an adult, I don't need to learn German. It's just that I want to. So I'm intentionally doing it. I paid for courses, so I'm not going to waste my money. Um, so that's one of the biggest difference between being an adult learning a, a, a newish skill or a new language uh, or whatever it is. Uh, than being a child. As I've mentioned before, cognitive decline as you age is a major issue for society. Unfortunately, learning a language, some recent research has called into question the strength of connection between bio bilingualism and the prevention of dementia. However, there's also plenty of studies that are saying, you know, learning a new skill as you age uh, can be good for cognitive function. So that's all, that's all I'm going to say for now. Um, basically, this uh, video is all about, um, you know, physical activity on the brain and learning a new skill as, as you age and the benefits of it. So comment below. Have you started a new skill or a new language uh, as you've been got older? And how did you find it? Did you find it different than when you were a child? Can you remember? OK, I hope you like this short video. And uh, if you did, please like, subscribe and share and do all the wonderful things that YouTube like us to do. And until next time, see you again soon.